Hello dear everybody, listeners from Lithuania and everywhere listening online this lecture about creative writing and how inspiration can become everyday practice. So today I'll tell you a little bit about creative writing, I'll give you some advices and we'll practice creative writing ourselves. So we have some people in the audience here and also we have our viewers online. So the first part is for the theoretical part and the second one is for questions. So you are very welcome if you have some questions to write it down and then write it for us in the end of the lesson. I just remind that this lecture is organized by Lithuanian Music and Theatre Academy and also of Nortier's program. So, directed by famous director David Lynch. Everything that we do starts with an idea. We don't know what to do unless we have an idea. So ideas are like fish and you don't make the fish, you catch the fish. You desiring an idea is like putting a bait on a hook and lowering it into the water. You can catch ideas from daydreaming or you can catch ideas from places. If you think that maybe a place could conjure ideas, then you have to go out of the house and go traveling. You can be going down the street, see a reflection on a little a pool in the gutter, and bang, an idea will come. Who knows how it happens? I always say it's like there's a man in another room with the whole film together, but they're in, they're in puzzle parts and he's flipping one piece at a time into me. And at first it's very abstract, I don't know, I have a clue. More pieces come, more ideas are caught, it starts forming a thing, and then one day there it is. So it, there is in another, in a way, there's no original ideas, it's just the ideas that you caught. The, the thing is to be true to the idea. A lot of artists think that suffering is necessary, but in reality, any kind of suffering cramps the flow of creativity. Let's say that Van Gogh, every time he went out and painted, he got diarrhea. It wouldn't be so good for him to go out. He'd have to be <laughs> really crazy. Happiness in the doing is so important and I always say it's our life going by and uh, then you this creativity flowing ideas are easier to catch and ideas that could take you out of drudgery work and lead you to someplace you know some fantastic things trillions and zillions of ideas there bubbling and ready to be caught So this was the short movie made by David Lynch and uh, it uh, always inspires me. You can watch it many times and every time you find something new. But um, of course there are also many books uh, written about creative writing and I would like just to start from some or at least to represent you some uh, from which I took all these advices and also from my own practice as a writer and playwright. Books are How to Write by Gertrude Stein. It's a philosophical essay, also with different advices and thoughts about creative writing. It's also Melan Kundera, The Art of the Novel, also useful to read for the ones who want to write a long piece. 
my most favorite book perhaps is Writing Down the Bones, which is also translated into Lithuanian language. And this is a book by Natalie Goldberg. Uh, once I read this book in uh, Germany, uh, going in the train, and I even missed my stop. So imagine how much I was <laughs> into it. So this is a very beautiful book about uh, everyday practice, inspiration, um, recognizing yourself as an artist and writer. Also famous Stephen King wrote a book on writing, even though he says he doesn't believe in creating writing lessons, but still he does give advices and do and does believe in possibility to develop the talent and to get better and better if you practice it consciously and theoretically. And the last one, but uh, not of course in general, but just for this lecture, is How to be a Writer by David Quantic. ...interviews with the writers, with the creators, and they are sharing their experience and inspirational thoughts. So my 12 advices are prepared in an old-fashioned style, as sometimes we are tired from technologies. So I've chosen a very simple one, just writing down on the paper. And the first one is a fear of the beginning. So this is a very important thing to remember because if you are an experienced writer, usually you think that it's easy. You just sit down and you start writing. But I do remember uh, that for the beginners, it's a big fear of empty page, a big fear of empty file. And um, usually we just uh, need to sit down and to start writing whatever it is, not to feel too much responsible to make mistakes or afraid to make mistakes. So a fear of the beginning um, maybe sounds very simple, but at the same time very feels it. Uh, the second one advice is to write for yourself. Some uh, beginning writers or the ones who are practicing creative writing lessons are saying that uh, but what if I write this and that, what my neighbors will think, or what my mother will think, or what my relatives will think? Can I write openly about everything I feel and think? So I would say that this is a must to write sincerely and not to be afraid about expressing your feelings, expressing your experience. Of course, if it's something very much connected to the real life experience of other people, it's uh, or if you can somehow to recreate it, but just to cross the first step of being afraid that somebody can think something negative about you, it's very important. You are a writer and it's good if you feel free to write everything you want. The third advice is or a, th a sentence is, every writer is a reader first. So, uh, some uh, young writers say, oh, I want to write this and that, but uh, what to do, uh, how to practice. And Stephen King always says, read a lot. And once he wrote in his book, one student asked him, but how can I read a lot if I don't have time for reading? And then he said, but then how can you find the time for writing? So, of course, it's important to read, to learn from very good classical examples, to learn from canonical examples, to read the works by successful authors, and to learn what earns a loyal readership. So, let's not forget the books. The fourth thought is about uh, talent, inspiration, and work balance. Uh, in the old times, especially in the antique times, this triangle was a little bit different, or a lot of different, because um, people were thinking that the talent is coming mostly from God's will, so the author is just a mediator, uh, let's say so, a media uh, transferring the God's 
efforts and it doesn't depend on him. So if you think that way, the talent takes the biggest part and then the work is the least because of course if everything depends from the God's will and if you don't have talent, so the work wouldn't help. But of course, uh, the thesis written by Aristotle, uh, which was called, as you know, a work about poetry, a work about tragedy, uh, was analyzing the rules of drama, how to write a drama. So it means if writing has some rules, so at the same time it can be a hard work to do because you should know these rules and to apply it for your writing. So this triangle I'm showing you here, it's totally the opposite to the antique times, but it's very um, up to date to now times because nowadays there is even a joke that uh, there is 1% of talent and 99% of work. I disagree with that. Everything is important, talent, inspiration and work. But I'm showing you this hymn just because to remind you that uh, please don't neglect the importance of working. If you have talent, that's great. Uh, inspiration will come also. But for it to come in the right time, in the right moment, when you are ready, you need to work hard. So the rest of the devices will be also very much connected to the working. Uh, the fifth one is keep a notebook handy. So it means that a journal, a notebook, uh, keep handy all the time so you can jot down all of your brilliant ideas. Um, also, sometimes I think I'm sometimes keeping a notebook next to my bed because if some good thought comes at night so it's easy just to wake up switch on the lamp write down one sentence and then come back to sleeping again of course some people are using smartphones there are many apps for writing and taking notes and uh, some people do like recorders because uh, you can record your thoughts even walking uh, doing some other stuff, not necessarily sitting down and writing it on the paper. So just please remember that good ideas, as David Lynch says, they are like fish, fishes. So if you are fishing, you will catch some, of course. But sometimes so many ideas cross our minds during the day that we forget them. So that's why it's important to write it down and then to work on it, develop it, and it's going to become a separate text. The sixth advice is be observant. So um, it's very simple because the life is going around us very intensively. Sometimes the life even is more important than art. Life goes first. Sometimes even do writers acknowledge this. And the people and activities that surround you will provide you with great inspiration for characters, plots and themes. So for every writer, it's important not only to read a lot, to write a lot, but also to be with an open eyes, to watch the environment and maybe to get some inspiration from it. The seventh advice is grammar, learn the rules. I know this sounds very boring, <laughs> but uh, we do need grammar. It's our working tool. So we can't escape it. And um, it's not only important to learn the rules and to know them good, but also important to know them well in order to break it and to make something totally new. So as sometimes there are people asking, do you need to uh, know classical dance if you want to study modern dance? Do you want to know all the rules if you want just to write something different? But of course, if you don't know the rules, it's the same as you are sitting down to the table and you're taking knife and fork and you don't know how to use them. So then it's a stress. But then you learn how to use them, then it's not a stress anymore and then you can um, eat in different ways and just to make them tools. So grammar is your tool. And uh, for instance, some writers like James Joyce, Virginia Woolf broke these rules. Um, as you know, starting unconscious writing technique, uh, we will try some exercise today also. And for instance, the same Gertrude Stein, I have mentioned you at the beginning of the lesson. Uh, she had a very special writing style because she was repeating the words 
which was not so grammatically correct, but it became her style. Like, for instance, her poem, A Rose is a Rose is a Rose. Now it's very famous in the American literature context and in the worldwide. The eighth advice is stop procrastinating. I know it's very difficult. Uh, turn off the TV, disconnect from the internet, tune out the rest of the world, sit down and write. So there are so many uh, seductions around us, like uh, social networks, uh, the life going on outside the window, and uh, we are distracted a lot. So some writers are really strict with this rule. And for instance, if they sit to write down in their room, sometimes they even, um, let's say, agree about hours, that two or three hours, they're just going to sit down and write no matter what. The phone is switched off, the doors are closed. Write a sentence. One writer was just sitting down two hours every day because this was his rule. But if you keep this practice, like every day, it helps you to have tradition, to have a, a kind of a habit which won't take so much effort anymore. The ninth advice is connected um, with the previous one, make space for writing. Because sometimes we think that uh, it doesn't need anything, you just sit down and write, and of course it's true. If you are very much uh, attacked by inspiration and overwhelmed by it, but sometimes you really need a calm space, um, private space just for you to sit down and write. So if it's a possibility, make this space for writing at home. It might be a writing desk, a writing corner, very small, tiny place. If it's not possible at home, of course, you can go to the library, to the cafes, uh, just to find your own space. Sometimes writers, as painters, do rent a studio, so a private space, working space where they can come and just to be attached to their work. The tenth advice is write every single day. I know it's hard, it's hard for myself even. Um, even though writing is my profession, I do write a lot, but it's easier to write when you have, uh, um, let's say, involvements with uh, contracts, with some projects, you have some goals to write this and that, so then it's easier to write every single day. But of course, if you don't have some compulsory commitment, then it's not so easy to um, force yourself to be very conscious and attached. But it's very important because it makes you habit and it makes you stronger and it makes you a good writer also. So this regularity is very important. Also I could give example about Stephen King who um, for the young writers is advising to write every day except maybe one day to have off peer week. I'm sorry, there's some technical issues. Let's wait a little bit.
are very sorry for this interruption. Uh, now we have some uh, fire alarm going on, as you can see at the academy. So for 10 minutes we're having a break just to learn out what's happening on. And then I'll be back. Oh, okay. okay, even now it ended. Thanks. Thanks to every righteous God. <laughs> so yes, things are happening. Not everything can be planned easily. Yes, so let's wait for our audience to come back also. Okay, so this was a little bit of stress, but this is very nice. Use writing exercises. That's what we're gonna do now, today. We'll practice some writing exercises and um, it always helps. It's easier to do it in a group, especially the creative writing courses, um, but it's also very useful and nice to do alone at home. Even the books I have showed you, they also have some advices like what writing exercises to use. Also online, even if you Google down like creative writing exercises, uh, I do believe there will be plenty of which you can choose. Also, writing exercises are important to improve your skills, strengthen your talent and explore different genres, styles and techniques. And the last one, but not the least, in the end I will tell you some more. Let go of your inner editor. And uh, this is very important because it's censor, censoring you. But um, of course, when students ask me, so what does it mean if I don't edit it myself? Am I free to write everything I want and everything is perfect? Not necessarily, but it's very important to recognize at which stage you can edit yourself and develop the text and at which stage you just should let it go freely. So it's especially important in the beginning when you just start writing, when it's your draft, it's not the last version of your text, just feel free. Try to relax to get all your ideas on the paper or on the screen and don't edit it too much. But of course, when you decide that it's finished, then you can read it at least three times and edit and develop the text and be very As I say, embrace your editor, but not at the beginning of writing your text. So now we'll try some creative writing exercises. And the first one I would like you to advise to try together, I will be here also writing with you, is um, called um, free writing exercise, which was invented by surrealists in the beginning of the 20th century when they were so much also with the psychologist involved in the um, way how to express your unconsciousness, how to reach the deepest waters of your soul, because not everything we can understand logically. Some things are unexplainable and they believe that this unexplainable part is in the unconscious mind. So one exercise they were doing for writing as I told, was called um, free writing exercise. And it's very easy and it helps to free your editor, to relax. But of course you need to do it every day, to practice it every day, and the time can be very different. It can be five minutes, 10 minutes. After one week or two weeks, you can uh, make it longer, even to a half an hour. But it's very important doing it not to criticize yourself, just to try your mind to let out. And the rules are very simple. Um, you just write everything what comes to your mind, not thinking what to write. And uh, it can be anything. Uh, water, water, it's hot, I'm happy, yesterday, the window, everything what comes into your mind without stopping and without letting your hand go off the exercise book or the computer if you're typing. So it means freedom one side, write everything you want, and the second, not stopping. If you don't know what to write, you can just write, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And of course, some mind anyway will come into your mind. Some thoughts, I'm sorry, will come to your mind. So let's take for the beginning five minutes. I have a sand clock. This is black sand. So I will turn it upside down 
and after five minutes I will tell you that please let's stop it and you don't need to finish a sentence because we're not creating a text it's not an art piece for something it's just letting our thoughts go out so five minutes from now please take your exercise books or open a file in the computer and let's write five minutes
and three, two, one, let's stop. <laughs> It's also very important to know about this exercise, that this is exercise not for reading. So, why it's important to know? Because sometimes when do people write, they feel responsibility. Okay, I should read later, I can't express myself freely. No, this is just for you. Sometimes it's even can be thrown away. But why it's important to do it? Because it frees your mind, it also is a good warming up exercise before writing because in our mind there is a lot of thoughts so this exercise is kind of emptying your intensive thoughts and members in the audience I would like to ask how was it as I said we don't need to read it so relax it's okay but just maybe you would like to share what was the feeling If you can in English or if you can in Lithuanian also welcome, I will translate and it. In the audience, uh, they hear what we say here? I think they're gonna hear and I will repeat it shortly. Okay. Yeah. I, I felt very strange, but it, it, I don't know, it, maybe this atmosphere in this uh, area, it's calming me down and I heard all my minds clearly. And I don't know, maybe because of your soft voice, that uh, everything came in my mind very strictly and I know what I want to write about. So it was kind of easy for me. It was clear. Was it enough time, five minutes, so you would like to write more? No. No, not enough. <laughs> <laughs> yes, as I said, you can practice at home and make it longer and longer and longer, your own time. Yes. It's okay, I just repeat it. So thank you for sharing your thoughts. It's nice also to use the possibility that we have live audience in front of me and uh, I can get the feedback because it's also very important while writing that you can share it with somebody else. I mean, not the reading itself also, but just thoughts to have writers' friends, to go to writers' group, so. also helping to analyze yourself, but uh, we will use it not for the psychological reasons or research, but also for just as a creative writing exercise. And it's always very important to remember that when you do the exercises, it's just the exercise. So it doesn't put the big responsibility stone on your neck. You practice, you are getting better. And even if you don't want to become a writer, it's just a nice way to express yourself and to know yourself better. So please remember your morning today. How did you start your day? And please write down five uh, images you have seen. It can be anything, a dog outside the window, something in your room, just what comes to your mind. Five words or phrases different images. We'll give some more time because everyone has different tempo, so just one more minute to finish this one.
Now please remember four sounds from your morning and write it down. It's not easy, it's not easy for those who have not such a sense, such a sense, but those who have not 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 such a sense, but Три сквапы. And now it's time to remember two words or phrases. It might be something you have read, something you have heard. It might be two words or two phrases. Please write it down. From the morning. Yes, from the morning. And now it's time to write one thought you remember from your morning. What was in your head? One thought from the morning. Please write it down.
Are you ready? Have you finished? Mm. Yeah? Okay, so. Scenario, I'm asking students to write a poem. In the easiest one, I'm asking to write one sentences. One sentence from the words you can choose. Like for instance, you can choose one smell, one sound, one image. It doesn't need to be logic, but maybe you find some interesting one sentence you can make out of it. God bless you. to finish it no it doesn't need to be logical feel free So as you can see, while doing creative writing exercises in the group, uh, as I said before, we have different timing, different tempos. So sometimes uh, the ones who are finishing faster, they are waiting a little bit, but I hope that this is not a disturbance, but just a possibility to think more about it. So do you like a sentence? Yeah, why not? <laughs> Would anyone would like to share a sentence? <laughs> it's not compulsory, just if you would like. It's in Lithuania, and it's difficult to translate into English so nice. But I can say that it's about uh, the feeling in the morning, how I was getting up and uh, how I met uh, the new day. So it was just uh, more about feelings. 
Wonderful. I was prepared for the music. Thank you. So our participant said that it was uh, about the feeling in the morning and how she was preparing for the new day. Exercise, but uh, from time to time you can use it. It also makes you to rethink what happened during the day because uh, the morning is something as the clean page, right? It's like an empty page and uh, sometimes we forget it, but sometimes we can see that it was full of thoughts, some sounds, images, it was very rich. And of course, during the day, we get more and more emotions and different experiences which we can use in our writing as well. So these were two exercises we have done here. And now it's the time for questions. So let's see if there are some questions from the audience. And I also will see if there are some questions online, uh, the people who are connected uh, now and watching this lecture online, they can write and send me a question and I'm gladly will answer it. So please, are there some questions from the audience also? Sorry? Mm -hmm. Do we have more so useful uh, exercises? exercises? <laughs> yes, of course, a lot. a lot. Them, yes. Yes. And uh, like for instance, this book I was recommending, Natalie Goldberg, Writing Down Your Bones, uh, is also translated into Lithuanian, and it's called Apirashima. So it also has inside like a lot of uh, exercises and advices which you can follow and use. Mostly any kind of book about creative writing has at least few exercises uh, about writing which you can practice differently. What I would suggest for the beginners or for the people who uh, even don't want to become a writer, but they want to practice writing, they want to become more conscious about themselves. So for the beginning, like even this unconscious writing, free writing exercise, like doing it, uh, most of the uh, teachers suggested to do it in the morning, like Natalie Goldberg, the same as saying that uh, then your mind is the most fresh. So like when you wake up, you can just do this exercise. And uh, of course, then some people say, but then I need to wake up earlier. Yes, but five minutes or 10 minutes, it's not such a big difference, but it can uh, really prepare you for the day. Mm. And I also have a question before the more comments when the questions. Uh, are these books uh, in the library of academy? Uh, I think no. Why? I'm, I'm not sure. Is it uh, problematic to buy them? to have them in our library? Um, I hope it's not. Usually every year uh, we do teachers suggest a list yeah. of books yeah. and um, before uh, I was not teaching a creative writing at Academy. Now I started to teach writing drama. So I was uh, also offering the library to order some books about how to write a drama. Mm -hmm. But this is a nice suggestion that we can also or just some books about creative writing. Yeah, yeah. I, I would uh, ask you to, to do that. <laughs> Gladly, I can recommend some, yes. I have a small, more sophisticated question. So as a writer, you always have the, you, you need to have notebook and always to be observer. Is it not complicated to always uh, to be, how to say, to be a writer, not a person like that, to have your life free not to be always intensively working on observing taking notes and uh, to remember about the situation and to find inspiration in daily life it's not complicated for you as a writer playwright mm -hmm. Could I, you? thank you for the question the question was if it's not complicated to be a writer every day consciously taking notes being observing the people around and uh, isn't it that some moments you want to be just a person, not a professional, right? Yeah, um, there are different types of writers. For instance, some uh, writers, I do have a poet living in the United States of America, a friend. Uh, so she's writing even when she's driving. 
Like I know it's very dangerous, but uh, when it's slow or if it's very direct row or if she stops at the red lights, she always has a notebook on her knee and she writes like some short notice which is coming into her mind. I don't recommend it, it's dangerous, but I just gave this example in order to show that some writers are really observed to keep themselves intensively um, writing down the notes. Um, myself personally, I don't feel so obsessed with that, but just the advice I think to be uh, observant and to watch the environment doesn't mean that uh, you need to be hunting all the time, like where is my narrative, where is my plot, you know, I... It's impossible. In that case, I wouldn't have friends. Anytime. No, but uh, just it means that be open to the world. Like uh, some writers think that they should create everything themselves, that everything should be fiction. But just this advice is reminding us that everyday life gives us lots of inspirations. So just we can catch something as an inspiration. It doesn't mean that uh, uh, I will use everything word by word I heard in the street. Maybe for documentary drama it's very good, but for fiction it's not necessary. But if I open my ears and I will listen to the style, let's say how this kind of profession people are talking, what vocabulary they are using, um, how the students, how the teenagers are talking, you know, I don't need to write it down or to record it secretly, but uh, at least I will have more exact uh, opinion or let's say vocabulary, how do they are speaking. So this is more about it. Are there any questions now? I will check it out. If there are some questions online. Uh, no, I don't see any. Mm -hmm. I quite new in this topic, but uh, what is the difference between playwriting, screenwriting, and creative writing, or novels writing? Or it's in general, everything covers, or it's something specific? Mm. So the question, thank you for it, was about uh, specifics of creative writing. What's the difference between playwriting, script writing, novel writing, and creative writing? So I would call creative writing as the roof, which covers all writing, because it means uh, just an authentic writing. and. Uh, some people do believe, like Natalie Goldberg, I have showed the book before, that everybody of us has a style because it's impossible to find two people who would write totally, totally and exactly the same. So in any case, we are already different. So in general, creative writing means uh, original, authentic writing. I mean by original, not that this is something uh, very, very necessarily talented or excluded, but just that everybody of us has own style. So if we don't copy it from somewhere, if we write it down, we do exercises. So this is already creative writing. And uh, playwriting, script writing, uh, poetry writing, it's already a genre. So different styles. And uh, it's more about already uh, concrete professional skills. Creative writing might be used for inspiration might be used for as a warming up exercises for different kind of styles. So thank you for the questions. Thank you for watching the lecture online. I have checked it out again. So far we don't have questions, but uh, later anyway you could contact us and if you want to ask something um, you could also find my name, Gabriela Lobanovskaite, on the Lithuanian Music and Theatre Academy website and write me personally and I will gladly answer it. And thank you for your attention. Thank you, audience, for getting involved into exercises. And have a nice, beautiful day and inspiration in everyday life which you can use. Please remember if you go fishing, you will catch a fish. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.